Hello everyone, welcome to our GeoSpecial Techno channel. Last session, we learned the basics of GeoSpecial services and GeoServer software. In this session, we're going to talk about how to install a GeoServer. If you want to know more details about it, watch the rest of this video. GeoServer can be installed on different operating systems since it's a Java-based application. You can run it on any kind of operating system for which exists a Java virtual machine. Java server's speed depends a lot on the chosen Java runtime environment. The latest versions of Java server are tested with both Oracle JRE and OpenJDK. These versions are Java 11 and Java 8 for Java server 2.15 and above. Java 8 for Java server 2.9 and above. Java 7 for Java Server 2.6 to Java Server 2.8. Java 6 for Java Server 2.3 to Java Server 2.5. And Java 5 for Java Server 2.2 and earlier. Remember that Java 9 is not currently supported. For best performance, we recommend the use Oracle JRE 8, also known as JRE 1.8. Implementations other than those tested may work correctly, but are generally not recommended. There are many ways to install GeoServer on your system. This section will discuss the two most commonly used installation methods for Windows, Windows Installer and Web Archive. Windows Installer The Windows Installer provides an easy way to set up GeoServer on your system as it requires no configuration files to be editor or command line settings. GeoServer is a software server written in Java, and as such it requires Java to be present in our environment. The first decision is make sure you have a JRE installed on your system. So go ahead and download JRE from Oracle's website. Navigate to the www.oracle.com, click the Products tab, and select Java. On the top right, click Download Java. Then scroll down and select JRE 8. Click on the Windows tab. At this point, we have a decision to make about which JRE installer to download, 32-bit or 64. Making the right decision now is important that will have consequences later when configuring show server. If you have a 32-bit version of Windows installed, you can only install a 32-bit version of Java. And if you have a 64-bit Windows installation, then you can choose them between two versions. Irrespective of whether it runs on a 32-bit or 64 processor architecture, the memory consideration is an important decision, since a 32-bit process can only address a maximum of 2 GB memory. Therefore, if you want to maximize the available server memory, we will need to consider using the 64-bit version of Java. However, if JRE was 32-bit, you can install JAI to work with coverage and leverage it for WMS output generation. The native JAI and JAI Image I.O. extensions can provide a significant performance increase when performing raster operations, in other words, responding to WMS and WCS requests. Select the downloaded file and run it as an administrator. Press the Yes button when asked from the user account control. Go with the default settings and press the Install button. After it has been installed, you should see a window informing you about the sizes of installation. Now we install JRE on your Windows computer. The first requirement is now fulfilled, and you can go over to the Joe Server download. Navigate to the www.joeserver.org and download page. If you are not sure, select Stable Release. Select the version of Joe Server that you wish to download. Click the link for the Windows installer. After downloading, double-click the file to launch. At the welcome screen, click Next. Read the license and click I agree. Enter the pass to a valid JRE. Java server requires a valid JRE in order to run, so this step is required. The installer will inspect your system and attempt to automatically populate this box with a JRE if it's found but otherwise you will have to enter this path manually. So a typical path on Windows would be C, Program File, Java, JRE8. Remember that don't include the bin in the JRE path. 
So if java.exe is located at C program files java jre8 bin java.exe, set the path to be C program files java jre8. When finished, click next. Select the directory of installation, then click next. Select the start menu directory name and location, then click next. Enter the path to your Java server data directory or select the default. If this is your first time using Java server, select the default data directory. When finished, click next. Enter the username and password for the administration of Java server. Java server's web administration interface requires authentication for management, and what is entered here will become those administrator credentials. The defaults are admin for username and Java server for password. It's recommended to change these from the defaults. When finished, click next. Enter the port that Java server will respond on. This affects the location of Java server web administration interface as well as the endpoints of Java server services such as WMS and WFS services. The default port is ADAD, though any valid and unused port will work. When finished, click next. Select whether Java server should be run manually or installed as a service. When run manually, Java server is run like a standard application under the current user. When installed as a service, Java server is integrated into Windows services and thus is easier to administer. If running on a server or to manage Java server as a service, select install as a service. Otherwise, select run manually. When finished, click next. Review your selections and click the back button if any changes need to be made. Otherwise, click install. Now Java server will install on your system. When finished, click finish to close the installer. If you install Java server as a service, it's already running. Otherwise, you can start Java server by going to the start menu and clicking start Java server in the Java server folder. Navigate to the HTTP localhost colon ADAD slash Java server or wherever you install Java server to access the Java server web administration interface. If you see the Java server logo, then Java server is successfully installed. Uninstallation. Java server can be uninstalled in two ways. By running the uninstall.exe file in the directory where Java server was installed or by a standard Windows program removal. Web Archive Java server is packaged as a standalone servlet for use with the existing application servers such as Apache Tomcat, Glassfish, JT, and JBoss. Remember that Java server has been mostly tested using Tomcat and so is the recommended application server. There are reasons for installing it such as it's widely used, well documented, and relatively simple to configure. Java server requires a newer version of Tomcat 7 or later. Other application servers have been known to work but are not guaranteed. Installation Make sure you have a JRE installed on your system. Java server requires the Java 8 or Java 11 environment available from OpenJDK or provided by your OS distribution. To download Apache Tomcat, navigate to the www.tomcat.apache.org. From the download section, click on Tomcat 9. For the Windows installation package, scroll down and choose 32-bit or 64-bit Windows service installer option. After it has been downloaded, right-click on the file and choose the Run as Administrator. Use the Next button to move through the installation wizard until you reach the Choose Components page. Check on the Host Manager and make sure that the documentation and example boxes are not ticked to avoid any unnecessary installation. Under the Tomcat branch in the Components list, we want to make sure the Service Startup box is ticked. This will ensure that the Tomcat service automatically starts when the computer is started, which is very useful in cases when the server has to be rebooted. Finally, we need to tick the box for native, which will make the use of the native APR for better escapability, performance and integration with other native web technologies. Click on the next button to move on the configuration page. This page is where we will set the configuration for Tomcat and Windows service. For the first installation, we can leave the default settings for ports as they are. Enter the username and password for the web administration page. Before moving on the next step, an important change to the default configuration is the name of the Windows service. 
If you want to maximize server resources, then we will want to scale up on the server by running more than one Tomcat service. We need to have a naming convention to distinguish between them. So we will use Tomcat 9-1 and adopt a naming convention of Tomcat 9-N when N is an incremented number to identify the instance. In this case, we use the default Windows service name. Click on Next will move the Java environment page that should have automatically selected the installation of Java we performed earlier. If it did not, you can manually browse to your JRE installation folder. Clicking on Next will move to the page where we can specify the installation folder. A default will be provided which will be the combination of a default installation folder with the Windows service name appended. You can either accept the default or specify your own. Once the installation is complete, the final wizard page will allow us to choose the start Tomcat. Before we start the Tomcat service, we must configure the memory setting that Tomcat will use for Java VM. So uncheck the box marked Start Tomcat Service. Configuring the Tomcat service is as follows. To open the Tomcat service configuration dialog, right click on the Tomcat 9W from C, Program Files, Apache Software Foundation, Tomcat 9 and B. Then run it as administrator. Once it's open, click on the Java tab at the top. The Java tab allows us to set options such as memory configuration that control the way Tomcat starts Java VM. Memory settings can be specified in one of the following two ways. Parameters in the Java Options text box, entering values in initial memory pool, maximum memory pool, and thread stack size. The choice is merely. One of the preferences as both will achieve the same effect. For now, we will set the memory to some good defaults for an all-rounder Java server. Enter the following recommended values. Set initial memory pool to 512 megabyte. This parameter tells JVM how much heap memory allocated on startup. This will ensure that memory management is more stable. In this case, we tell JVM to allocate 512 megabyte heap on startup. Set maximum memory pool to 1024 megabyte. This parameter tells JVM the maximum amount of heap memory it can allocate. In this case, JVM will allocate a maximum of 1 GB of memory. With the Java option set, we are now ready to fire up the Tomcast service and check everything as is expected. From the General tab, click on the Start button and finally click OK. If everything works correct, the service starts up. Now open a browser windows. Navigate to the HTTP localhost colon 8080 and get the Tomcat 9 web page. Bear in mind, security must be utmost in our considerations. Make sure the password is strong and try to avoid using common usernames such as Tomcat admin or manager. Navigate to the www.joeserver.org and download page. Select the version of Joe Server that you wish to download. If you are not sure, select Stable Release. Select Web Archive on the download page. Download and unpack the archive. Deploy the Joe Server Web Archive as you would normally. Often, all that is necessary is to copy the joeserver.var file to the Tomcat's web apps directory. Then the application will be deployed automatically. Use your container application's method of starting and stopping web apps to run Joe Server. To access the web administration interface, open a browser and navigate to the localhost colon 8080 and press Manager App button. Enter the username and password of Apache Tomcat. Now click on the Joe Server link. Then you will be prompted to the Joe Server web page. Uninstallation. Stop the container application. Remove the Joe Server web app from the container application's web app directory. This will usually include the Joe Server.var file as well as the Joe Server directory. Difference between joeserver.var and joeserver.exe Joeserver.exe installs joeserver as a Windows service or optionally as a manually started program running inside Jetty. Joeserver.var is a platform independent var file that needs to be installed into a container server, for example Tomcat and JBoss. The downside of using the exe installer is that you have to be on a Windows machine. You also get less choice of servlet container. 
Sometimes we need to install multiple Joe servers on your computer at the same time. In Windows mode, you have to assign different ports to each Joe server and install them. While in a web archive, you can easily install many Joe servers on one port with different names in much less time. In this session, we learned you how to install Joe server by two methods. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. You can give it a thumbs up and if you would like to see more, please subscribe my channel. Have a good time!